Recording. Okay, you're on candid camera now. Okay. Get back to social distancing here. This rest stop was pretty crowded. Ready? Yep. Okay, we are entering the small Oregon Cascades town of Oak Ridge. Got my wife with me today. She uh, missed out on the Ofterheide road ride we did the other day and I missed getting video of the red covered bridge so we're gonna take care of that today. This was at one time a very thriving lumber mill town and between the spotted owl controversy of the 70s and the North American Free Trade Agreement it kind of wiped the town out for a while had a little bit of a renaissance in some places, but this COVID-19 has shut down a lot of things that were open. That little coffee stand over there was always busy. They've shut their doors for this deal. But there's a little, a little barbecue stand up here up the road about a mile down the road. We're going to stop there and grab lunch, so we'll make sure that you see that on video. So if you're passing through here, that's pretty good barbecue considering we're not in Texas. Well, the hardware store is open. That's good. Another church that's doing their church services online, so join us for Facebook Live. Yep, there we go. Just next to the A&W and the subway is this little place called Smoke and Go. And it's not dope. It's meat. We're going to go in and get us some. So we'll just park right up in here. Okay. There it is. Smoke or smoking barbecue is the name of it. So we're going to get our lunch and we'll fire this back up in a couple minutes. Recording. Okay. Well, we got our lunch in our pannier box and our cooler. I'm going to take a short ride over to a little place called Westfur. Westfur is the old housing area for the lumber mill. A lot of those homes have been purchased and remodeled. There's a needle bed and breakfast in there where the lumber mill office used to be. We'll go by that. And we're going to go across a old wooden covered bridge and have us a picnic. And then we'll ride the 90 miles or so back to Lapine, back home. There's a business opportunity for you. An old bowling alley. Nah, we don't want that one. We'll go down the other one. We can go that way, but we'll miss a bridge. Andy. I like going over old bridges. It's kind of fun. There 
There's even a sign there for the covered bridge. Welcoming us to Westfer. A little construction up here we are. Some more of the housing district over there. And doing a little tree trimming. We'll just uh, stay out the way. So off to our left there through the trees, the other side of the river, that's actually where the mill was at. Big flat area there. They got to figure most of these houses are over 100 years old, which in the western United States is, makes for an old house. To the left is the covered bridge, and we're going to ride right across that. I think that's pretty nifty. You can still drive on this one. I was going to video this the other day on our way back down this road, but my battery died on my camera, and I didn't think to get the little cord out of my pannier box and plug it in. Good old wood plank bridge. All locally sourced timber there. Hey, look, we got the picnic area to ourselves. We can just go sit right over here. There you have it. You've been across the West Fur Covered Bridge. Just got to catch a little more video of the end of the bridge, and I'll be right back. The sign up there, don't know if you can read it. It says it was built in 1945. The year World War II ended. So it was a good year. Pretty flowers. There you are. So a few weeks before Christmas, the local town of Westford here, they get together and they decorate that thing for Christmas and fill it full of lights. So maybe we'll come down here this winter in the car and see what that looks like. Well, we're going to go eat our 
smoked brisket we just bought. So ta-ta for now. Recording. Okay. Wow, well, we finished our lunch. Yep. Finished our lunch. We'll go back through the covered bridge. Looks like we might have a little weather on the way home. That always makes it exciting. Okay. We'll go around through the parking lot. Get a good view of the bridge again. Okay, that blue house over there is a bed and breakfast. I don't think they're getting any business right now. So this little road goes up this canyon. It's like another old bowling alley. Now a post office. This are actually some pretty neat places up in here. That's the city hall. This goes up this canyon and comes out on the back side of the town of Oak Ridge. So we'll uh, catch a little video on this and then we'll be done. There's a tunnel. Too bad we can't ride through it. I probably could ride through it. That could be disastrous. I think, well, we're gonna go straight ahead. Oak Ridge Golf Course to the left. Roman.
Nice old Land Cruiser there. Remember when you couldn't hardly give those things away, now they're worth big bucks. At least in good shape. We'll go down this way. This is the actual part of downtown Oak Ridge that you don't see from Oregon Highway 58. Doesn't look like there's much happening up here now either. Just like that, we're back to the highway. And Oak Ridge's, Oak Ridge's one traffic signal. State Patrol trying to be sneaky, but we can tell. Well, you've already seen this part of Oak Ridge, so we'll just turn the video off. Hope everybody has a great day. If you ride, ride safe and have fun. Bye. Recording. Okay, we're almost at the top of Willamette Pass. See how that's spelled? It's not pronounced Willamette. That is a Willamette Pass, about 5,000 foot elevation, give or take a couple feet. Off to the left is a ski hill, closed now for spring and summer. Right down here, we're going to take a turn and right down in between the snow banks. There's a resort down here along Odell Lake. They are open. Alright, better slow down. Mom slide forward on the seat. This is also one of the trailheads for the Pacific Crest Trail, so if you're into hiking the length of the nation, a good chance you've been through here. Shelter Cove Resort is a like a shipping junction. People can ship supplies to themselves or have family ship them supplies or mail or whatever. And it'll go down to the resort and they'll hold it for you. It's kind of neat. It's right below the Diamond Peak Wilderness. So you just come hiking down off the PCT, Pacific Crest Trail. And right down there, you get yourself a hot meal there in the summer. Pretty good burgers and such. Pretty good general store. Actually got... Uh, They'll set up a kind of an open air tent just for backpackers to come in to drop their packs and stuff, and change their socks, and do laundry if they need to do that. So it's pretty nice that they cater to those folks. And if you come down there in the summer when all this coronavirus stuff is over, you will meet people from all over the world hiking that. Imagine. Imagine Appalachian Trail on the east side of the United States, probably kind of the same thing. 
That Pacific Crest Trail goes from, well, at least the Canadian border. Maybe farther north, I don't know. Clear down to the border with Mexico. Sounds like fun on a motorcycle, but I don't know if I want to walk that far. Of course, you can't legally ride the bike on, or the motorcycle on the PCT itself. However, there are routes that roughly parallel it, one of which is part of the Oregon Backcountry Discovery Route. So, if our towns get to reopen, I'm going to do that this summer. I think it's Route 5, but not exactly sure. But look at that, we got snow. I tell you, I look at those particular all-wheel drive Toyota minivans like that, and they just look like they tip over really easy. Some nice cabins here along the lake. But then, you wouldn't drive that uh, little Toyota van the way you'd ride this motorcycle, so I guess it's all right. It just looks like it'd be kind of slow and a little top-heavy, kind of like my old Jeep TJ Wrangler. Except you can get more stuff in that minivan, huh? So, right there to our left is the campground. It's snowed in, so I guess we don't have to be upset about it being closed. It's not going to open anytime soon, anyway. Well, up here where it says pavement ends is the entrance to the resort. It'll be to the left. There'll be a cut to the right in the snow. And that takes you to the trailhead, which then you can take up into Diamond Peak Wilderness. What are you doing? You're reading the sign. You don't even know I'm here. No, I surprised her. No clue. Oh, somebody's behind me. This is Shelter Cove Resort. RV spots you can rent. Well, they're putting some boats in the water. Good. Boat launch. So they got a pretty good, uh, pretty good kitchen there in the summer. That's won't open until summertime traffic gets real busy. But it's pretty good. And here we are. Hope you enjoyed that little ride. <laughs>